This podcast contains potentially adult language, adult themes, definitely drinking, and possibly sexual context. Listener discretion is advised. Drinking with Authors, the Literary Briefs Edition. This is me sounding like I'm educated. No, I'm <laughs> not at all. Okay, it was fucking, that was fucking terrible. Your face, Mark, was fucking I was like, what though. show am I on? What, what? Yeah, your eyes, I was, he, she, he's like, what is she doing? Okay, <laughs> it's fine. It's fine. Okay, so I am your host, Erica Lance. My co-host today is... Mark Muncy from eerieflorida.com. Very cool. And our amazing guest today is Bob Dixon. Hey. Okay, so let's talk about Big more fan fan, maybe a wave. Well, you know what? They actually I think add stuff to the podcast in the cheer section because I mean I hope they do. Otherwise I just sound like a fucking idiot every episode. I'm not sure which it is. It could be that. <laughs> um okay so so um, I am drinking, which maybe I've had a bit too much. I don't know. Angry Orchard Unfiltered. Oh, our sponsor today is Skunk Brother Spirits, DWA10. Check them out. It's amazing. You know, they post drink recipes all the time. Wow. They're fucking amazing, the drink recipes. Like, anyway. Okay. Open um, bottles, go chill. <laughs> yes, that is one drink recipe. Okay. Anyway, Unfiltered, Angry Orchard, pretty good. Doing well by me tonight, Mark. Let's do a little pluggy poo for our favorite coffee shop. Our favorite coffee again. I'm doing coffee shop of horrors. Uh, face your morning. So I'm doing their caramel scream. It's the scream face on it. Uh, it is delicious. And uh, since I've been recovering from Megacon voice, I put some lemon in it and made it a cold brew. And it is a joy. Caramel and lemon, I didn't think would go. And now I'm like, okay, I'm, yeah, I'm in. I didn't want say something in the last episode but i'm like that sounds fucking terrible i don't i am all in on this idea. this is amazing so it might just be so, the seizure meds that make everything taste better but you know that it could be but coffee shop of horrors, like we're gonna, it's great we're gonna do a little shout out to them coffee shop of horrors look them up they're a family-owned coffee distribution that has a ton of different flavors and they're all horror themed i think for yep. the yeah they're all horror themed percent yeah and they've got yeah. some great our good friend al going back has his own flavor called tribal screams which is a hazelnut that's really good uh based on his short story collection uh uh and then uh my favorite is their morning bj which is uh beetlejuice all right then. yeah exactly yeah. that's right <laughs> up your was line, like, i like it Oh, wait, it's you know, Beetlejuice. I, I, Never mind. I got emailed the other day for a free membership to BJ's, and that was not what I thought it was going to be. I know. I was so disappointed <laughs> going in there. I mean, I was so disappointed. disappointed. I An another but, marketing but opportunity. Banana nut bread is the flavor, which is hysterical. So, banana Oh, my God. Bread. That's uh, ridiculous. Okay. And, and Bob, what are you drinking? You're smoking a great cigar, but you're drinking... Drink Corona and smoking a Codwell cigar. I, I uh, enjoy my cigars uh, just because they bring me peace of life and they get rid of people who are annoying. <laughs> that hashtag true story. Okay, you are you ready? It is rapid fire question time. 42. Oh, wait, 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 Okay, number. not the answer to life, the universe and everything. What is your favorite book of all time? Uh, aside from Erie, Florida, because we're not going to promote that. Uh, <laughs> I gotta give um, you a dollar now, man. I know, I know, right? Every time I say Erie Florida, I get a dollar. That's oh, just two dollars. Uh, um, that's that's a tough one because I mean there's so many good books out there. And the other thing is I have a lot of good friends who are authors, and I, you know, like a friend of mine, Sam Recall, does some fantasy stuff, he's good. Uh Shane Moore does some fantasy stuff, he's good. Um uh Amanda Bro and Mark do some good stuff. Um, you know, so I, I'm I, I'm probably a wide variety of independence. Um just based on my mood at the time. Um, I, I enjoyed the Percy Jackson series a lot. Um, it, it just really depends on my mood. Uh, the one I'm reading, I've am i been reading recently um, was, um, it's an adult, and not adult, but it's just a human book about uh, the it, it, it's something about the kingdoms. Uh, but anyway, it was like the, the princesses have to be saved. They actually saved the princess. The, the princesses saved the prince. And tells oh. Them basically, I forget the name of it, but that's kind of funny. So it, it basically was good writing and tells a good story uh, that I'm into it. 
So I don't know if I really have a favorite. I mean, there's a stupid series by a hacker named Snapper who's something that I like, but I mean. <laughs> <laughs> wow, we've put a shameless plug in our questions. I, like I did, I did. Did I write? Oh, maybe I did write that. Do you have cue cards? <laughs> you should have cue cards. Okay, what about the least favorite book of all time? I'm not gonna say the Bible. Like I'm in trouble in Bible Belt. Uh, <laughs> uh, and now called... drinking with authors gets hate mail. Okay. No, no, no <laughs> uh, that'd be tough because if I didn't finish reading it, it was pretty bad for me. And at that point, I just kind of blocked it out from my memory, to be honest with you. Yeah. Um, so I mean, because yeah, those. yeah there's, I mean, there's, I'm, I'm sure there's things that as I read, I'm like, okay, this just isn't me. I just got through it all piles somewhere and forgot it existed. Okay. What about your favorite book that was made into a TV show, show or a movie? Can I go comic book? Sure. Sure. Uh, gotta go Captain America because I grew up a Captain America fan and it was after watching the Captain America movie in the 80s which made you cringe and will bang your head into the wall. It was oh, not. Yes, that's true. Sorry, sorry Red was, Brown. Red Brown's a friend of mine who actually played Cap in that. So, but yeah, sorry, Reb. We yeah, agree. No, I mean, and, and he no, agrees. Just, the movie was terrible, but he did his best for what he could. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's no, it's no disrespect to anybody. Just they, they weren't ready to do comic book movies back in the 80s like they do now. And God, you know, the kids nowadays have no clue. I mean, we we cringe when they saw it, but when they saw it doing the movies, we was like, I mean, I was just blown away with what Marvel Comics has done. Yeah. What about one that you think they did an absolutely fucking terrible job of? Captain America, 1980. <laughs> yeah. you, can't, you can't reuse an answer. Can't reuse um, an answer. Mark, what the hell are you doing? I was queuing. <laughs> he's, he's, he's queuing, yeah. Uh, bad movie to book. Oh, God, let me thank you for a second. Wow. Because uh, I, I, got, I got some answers here, but I'm, I'm drawing a blank. Uh, you know, I didn't like the uh, Stephanie Plum movie. Oh, yeah. Agreed. The, the Stephanie Plum is a book. My wife got me in those. Those are fluff, but they're a lot of fun. They're a lot of fun. But uh, the movie really, uh, they, they did not do a good job with that. Ivanovich, I think. Jenner Ivanovich. Yeah. Jenner yeah. Ivanovich. Great. Great series. Yeah, I, thought, I thought the movie kind of was uh, eh, kind of a letdown. Yep. Agreed. That it's, it's like the Dresden Files is mine because the book series is amazing and the TV show was just disaster. And uh, they had a couple pluses, but, you know, and it's, it's one of those, man, this is such a great series. Why didn't it get the right treatment? And I agree with the Stephanie Plum, you know, the Ivanovich, it's a brilliant book series and it definitely could have done better on the show. Now, my wife would say the uh, Lestat series on the TV was not as well done as the thing. I'm, I have not read those because it's not what I read, but uh, she would say those were big, uh, uh, the uh, Queen of the Dam was a big disappointment for her now. I'm oh. just don't get Stuart Townsend was the only redeeming quality of the Queen of the Damned, <laughs> mainly because he had his shirt off a lot. That was the only redeeming quality <laughs> of that movie, as far as I'm concerned. I got, my book, shirt on, I got my shirt on as a redeeming quality, but I take it off, it gets real ugly real quick. <laughs> it's, not, it's not a redeeming quality. Maybe we'll leave it on. No, it's, I, I have to say, though, that book, I don't think a lot of people realize because Queen of the Damned and Interview with the Vampire are like, they're totally different books. Like yeah. when you go, well, Lestat's a rock star. Like you just go down this path. It almost seems like you couldn't make that into a good movie because nobody would fucking believe what was happening yeah. was a part of this other, you know, series. series. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It doesn't right, make so, sense. Bob, I got one for you. Uh, you mentioned Douglas Adams earlier. You quoted Douglas Adams in our answers. Uh, so uh, who inspires you to write comedy? What's, who's your inspiration? Um, I just think the world needs to laugh a little more. Um, I, I'm a smart ass by nature. I can't help it. Uh, always have been. Um, I, I don't, uh, know that I'm inspired by anybody. Right. I just do. I mean, so, you know, for me, it's just, you know, I see situations that are humorous. I see things that are funny and, uh, it's, it's fun to tell those stories. Yep. No, that makes sense. So do you, when you're reading, do you prefer? Is there a preferred method of reading? Do you like paper, ebooks, audiobooks? Um, well, I definitely like to read from left to right, but um, yeah, paper. Paper. She's like, do you finish a book if it's not good? No. Uh, I, basically, if you don't have me in the first thirty pages, 
then your book's not getting finished. What about um, uh, reviews? Do you leave reviews? Uh, only if I'm gonna leave some positive. Um, if I know the author personally, I may contact and say, hey, I didn't understand where you went here. And I may have a, a professional conversation in a, in a creative way. But honestly, um, I, I, I don't leave negative reviews to people because um, just because I, <clears throat> I, I have no choice in my leaves a bad review on somebody who the book is riddled with grammatical errors and all that stuff. I mean, I ain't talking about like one or two errors because that happens. That happens to traditional press. That happens in Indies. Um, but I've had people read stuff goes, you know, like, you know, they'll review like Mark's book, for example. And this review would never happen because every flaw is so amazing. But they'd be like, you know, Another dollar. I, Damn. I, I, this is getting like, really expensive for you, Mark. I'm, I'm, I'm just throwing this out there. Yeah. Sending but, the uh, Venmo lose now. All your Megacon profits in this podcast. There, there's the 20. Done. <laughs> but uh, but they'll, they'll be like, you know, I don't like uh, horror stuff. I don't like uh, paranormal stuff. And uh, this book just really sucks. It's like, okay, you don't like anything this book's about. So why, why did you expect to like it? And, yeah. um, you know, it's, it's like Snafu. When I say, if you get offended, you don't read it, basically. And people go, oh, this book offended me. Well, what the fuck did you expect? I told you it was going to offend you. <laughs> you know, so, you know, like I said, if I, you know, I, I, I leave positive reviews because I also I know, especially in any market, I mean, these guys out there, you guys and gals out there, they're, they're putting their whole work into this and they're not trying to put out a bad product. I mean, it, it may not be to my taste, but it doesn't mean it's a bad book. It just means I didn't care for it. And that's, that's what people I think need to get back to. Just because you don't like it doesn't mean it's bad. Agreed. What about, um, uh, oh my God, I just lost my trade. Do you have one, Mark? I just lost my trade. Oh, of course. Oh, I always have one. What is, uh, you? What is your dream genre? If you could write any genre, just magically make it happen. What would that be? What I'm writing. Okay. <laughs> uh, honestly, I don't write stuff. Uh, initially, I, I got to write the, the novels on the young adult stuff because I was like, you know, hey, young adults hot, they sell. But honestly, in the last few years, especially, if I don't enjoy, if I don't care what. I can honestly say the stuff I read, last 10, 12 things I read, I don't know what market they're going to fit. I don't know what niche they're going to fit. I don't know what genre they are. Because uh, like Snafu is adult humor, but I mean, I don't really know outside that what genre it is. I, I, I write stuff because I enjoy writing it. I think the cool thing about saying that is that we're at a time when genres are being broken. I mean, honestly, we're at a time where you have publishers Slowing that, throwing that in there, Four Horsemen, look how I plugged that. But um, that are willing to go, okay, you don't fit in a mold. Because I think that's a problem with traditional publishing. Even when they step out of the, okay, it's got to fit this mold, they go, well, we can take one of these that does this weird thing, but then we need everything else to fall into cozy mystery and, you know, small town romance and stuff. And they're great books, don't get me wrong, but it, they, they're not willing to take chances to go, how can this work? And I've seen, which is really awesome, so many great genre bending type books that are just fucking phenomenal. Yeah, and that's the thing. I mean, like, you know, you take the books and like I said, oh, like Snap Food's a niche. I know that. I know I could pitch that to every major publisher in the country. Unless I just caught one on a good day, then never go you know, ask for a manuscript. And it doesn't change the fact that when and Mark Marco tells this, when I go to shows, I sell books. The book has a fallen. I got people who live, I had one guy actually order the uh when I had only two books, I ordered the first he asked me how many I had. I told him I said I got two being edited and two done. And he PayPal me enough money to not only cover the first four books, but to ship them to him. Nice. So you know, and that's the thing, you know, there's different, I mean, Snafu would never seen the live day if I didn't do it myself, or unless I just got lucky on an odd agent or an odd publisher that had good relationships, like, let's give it a try. It doesn't mean it's not good writing, it just means that the average publishers, the average traditional publishers go look and go, yeah, no. No, and I think background. that's true. Yep. So, go ahead, Mark. Uh, comic book background, who's your favorite superhero? Uh, aside from the ones I created? Okay. Aside um, from what you created. And, uh, and taking out of the account the people I know who do comics. Right. Because <clears throat> so I would knock out Bill Tushy, she, uh, 
and people like that who I know. Um, yeah. I, I grew up with a Captain America fan, um, so I'm, I'm gonna go with Cap. You know, favorite villain. Who's your favorite villain? Yeah, doesn't have to be comic book villain. Period. Uh, um, ha! Let, me, let, me think. Uh, uh, let, let me think on that one. Uh, actually, you know what? And, uh, Jim Stalin created Thanos. Uh, he also created uh, Dreadstall, which is one of my favorite comic books. Is two false favorite comic book heroes. Uh, but uh, I like the way they did Thanos in the movie because he he was a, he was a, he was a bad guy in the Marvel comic universe. But what he wanted really wasn't. I mean, granted, he wanted to about half the population, but the reason he wanted to do it was for a good reason, mm-hmm. and that's so people would install and they would have the they would have plenty. So I like that premise a lot. So it I really started to half the people. Yeah, I think some of the best villains are based in the thought that what they think they're doing is correct. Yeah, because if you think what you're doing is wrong, you know, there's pure evil people out there. Don't get me wrong, but generally what we would consider pure evil people if you go talk to them they have this completely laid out why they think it's correct and why they think what they're doing is the right thing to be doing and they don't understand why everybody else doesn't think this would be the right choice to make you know yeah well that's the thing i mean the the war and back when i was a kid which was eons ago i mean uh the war i mean we, we we had villains who were he was always good and the villain was always bad and it was no middle and it wasn't until spider-man came along that the hero struggled because spider-man was the first hero as far as the major publishers that struggled with paying his bills and then you know at quick mobile and not that he didn't make bad moral decisions but like when his uncle got killed because he decided it was none of my business to get involved and you know he struggled with that and the, the villains started getting more complex and like you said in their mind the reason for doing it was rational you know their mind may be insane, but it was rational. True, true. Okay, if you could be any paranormal creature, what would you be? Invisible man. Oh. Oh. Why? I dig it. <laughs> Mark knows why. <laughs> <laughs> the, the 13 you any 80s theme comedy with invisible people, you'll know why. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you know how much fun I could have with that? It's true. You'd have a very hard time selling books. Let me just put that. But I'm bum. Mark. Oh, the mine? Don't get any better. Oh no, 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 no. So I, I leave it here. <laughs> <laughs> this is what you're going to leave there? Okay. Well, it's your turn to ask a question, my co-host. Oh, oh it right? is. All right. It is. It is. It is. All right. So. um Okay, so we've done the comics thing, we've done the villains thing, we've done the movies thing. All right, I got it, I got it, I got it, I got it. All right, what is your um, what is your ultimate goal besides making money? As far as writing? As far as writing. Oh, okay. Because I must say, there's you know different goals here. Oh well, uh, there you go. if you want to get into philosophical, that's a different podcast, but we can do that. Okay, well, we can do that later. <laughs> um, you know, I just I just like to get books out and get people to enjoy them. I mean, honestly, I mean, the money's a nice aspect of that, but I I've never really been about money. Um, you can always make money. Um, the the I, I enjoy telling a story. I enjoy. I, I love when somebody emails me or sees me and says, you know, I, I got in this book. And I love it. Uh, a guy recently uh, emailed me saying he was reading uh, one of the snap food books on a plane, and the girl beside him kept laughing. And as they got off the plane, she goes. I want to apologize because I was reading over your shoulder <laughs> and that to me is just epic, you know, because his is supposed to have no clue what this getting to and re- reading snafu of all things. They, they got be wondering what the fuck have I just got myself into, but they <laughs> loved it, you know, and, and that to me is just kind of its own. It, it, and Mark, you know, what I do and I'm sure you guys do. It, it's his only world. Somebody comes to you and tell you uh, this something you wrote just really touched on or affect him. Or in my case, just made him laugh for a few hours. That's great. And that, you know, that honestly, you, I, you provided me and that, car ride alone with hours of entertainment so you know appreciate it so that's very very cool okay so um what is the weirdest fan experience you've had wow oh. okay uh this goes back to my comedy it was just kind of funny because i didn't notice it uh so i'm doing my gig i'm trying to sell books and this girl's been talking to me and i'm doing pretty good because she wants like uh, like 50 dollars of comic books and um, 
after she leaves, I'm doing a show with a guy named Dan DeBono, who we did a lot of shows together. And uh, he saw a slide. I'm like, what's so funny? He goes, you didn't notice? I'm like, no. He goes, her boyfriend or husband, not sure, but he said boyfriend, walked up and tried to hold her hand. She slapped his hand away. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, oh, no, no, I didn't notice that at all. <laughs> I, I was focused on the sale. I mean, I, I've been uh, June will be thirty years I've been married. I'm not out there trying to meet women, you know. So, and my focus, and you know, your focus on hey, they want books. Let's see what else we can get them, you know. Oh, oh so that, that, that was an odd one. Now you give your wife a lot of credit for editing and co-authoring and all that. Uh, putting up with me. Does, is she going to be writing anything on her own? The world may never know. Um, uh, she, she definitely, um, she, she's definitely one of the most intelligent people I've ever met. Um, and she has the ability to write a book. Uh, I, I, we talked, I, I told her, I said, if you're a writer, I'll be better. So do I write because, you know, I'm just a hacker or a computer. Uh, but, um, you know, I don't know. I mean, uh, she, she hates the editing process, but she loves the results of it. Um, so we'll see, maybe one day I'll, I'll talk her into that. Awesome. Now, now, do you have any other editors or just her? Just her, I, I uh, um, she, um, I, I did have a, a go. Ashley, a, a friend of ours, edit Rags and Ruins. Um, Lynn's particular about who who edits my stuff, and uh, it, it, she is the best editor for my stuff because she knows how I think, she knows how I operate, and even when I'm not very clear in writing, she knows the kind of direction I'm going. So that's always a plus. Um, uh, unfortunately, I, I write much faster than most people can edit, like the uh. The seven book series I was saying about. Uh, I wrote the first one I thought it was going to be one and done. And then I figured out book two and three. And then from there, I wrote the final four books. And one was in 11 days, one was in 18 days. And these are like 24, 25,000 award novellas. So, I mean, we're not talking about the novels, but still, I wrote the last four in probably three months. Which was 100,000 words. So. About 100,000 words. Yeah. So, but it was just, I, I would sit down on my phone on my porch with a cigar or to, uh, a cup of coffee to make a note on what I was going to do in the next chapter. The next thing I knew, I had a chapter knocked out. And so some days I was writing, you know, my chapters in that book are like 1,000, 1,200 words each. Um, and so, I mean, some days I was writing two and three chapters. And it was just all flowing very well for me. It's just, it was just an amazing feeling. Uh, I, it, the, the Crossroad Cathedral book is one that I, I always tell. I think every author has a story and they may not know what it is yet. They have one story they want to tell. And I, I, want, I had an idea for this book 30 years ago. I was going to call it Abstract Concepts for a Spoil Reality. But I couldn't figure out how to tell the book without making it sound like I was like preaching to people. And that was not the idea of the book. It's just a, a deal with social issues. And when I got done with the first book, I said, I wrote the book I've always wanted to write. And I didn't know I was writing it. And that was just an amazing feeling. That's good. Very awesome. And I honestly don't know how to follow that up with more ridiculous questions. So <laughs> I'm sure so we can find a way. Yeah, no, let's do some shameless self-promotion. So what do you have coming? So you just released book three, which is called? Snafu Football Morning Wood which got you kicked out of book signings, which I appreciate. Well, um, yeah, well, and the thing is, like I said, me, me and the store owners have a great relationship. We've talked about doing some events in the future and he made a decision that was right for the store and I, I respect that. So, um, you know, and, and, and you know what, sometimes it's weird come on a weird thing because a, a, a friend of mine runs a, a local theater over in Tampa and they were going to do it. It's called Lab Theaters. If you have, if you like uh, your local shows, um, go, go check them out. Um, and they do a fundraiser called Lab Laughs each uh, year. And it got put off from beginning of the year to June. And he was going to have me over there to do the book release there. And then um, they, with, with COVID come on, it kind of struck and they had to cancel. So I've actually had two events uh, in a row canceled on me now. Well, at least they didn't cancel due to the title of your book. <laughs> yes. Um, my, my next uh, book event I'm doing right now on schedule is uh, July 9th in Columbus, Georgia, which is my hometown. I'll be there at the library with some other authors. Uh, doing a, a, a little book sign that actually be fun um this summer i'd like to get a snafu four done which will be uh called rehab rejects book four in the trilogy and then i'd like to get the uh mystery done made for the uh november i'm hoping for november release on that very very cool well and how do people get a hold of you what is your social media 
Uh, author Bob Dixon on all the uh, major social medias, uh, Facebook, Twitter, uh, Instagram, and uh, Vero. Yes, and apparently he's a big Snapchatter. Just kidding. Don't do that. Don't do that to him. Your messages yeah, will I, go unanswered. Yeah, I don't, I don't, I don't get the Snapchat because, you know, you get, well, first of all, Snapchat's funny because you get like these requests from people who you have absolutely no clue who they are. And they'll see people, honey, don't you want to see me naked? Like, no, not really. Uh, thanks. <laughs> you know, because I'm, I'm not a, a, a 22 year old guy who doesn't understand how the internet works. <laughs> 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 I mean, you know. <laughs> I mean, when Mark and I was growing up, you know, we had magazines. Yeah, you know? well, that's, yeah exactly. That's, you know, it was, now, it was a matter of whose dad had the least guarded Playboys. That was what yeah, you and, and now, I mean, these people can go in there and see everything. I mean, they don't realize how good they got it. No, oh, man. Now you just type in two keywords and you got anything you need. So it's all good. So. And that's well, true. And hopefully it's not laced with ransomware. <laughs> yeah, hopefully. That, that happens, you know. Well, that's the thing. I, 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 anybody who finds the book, my daughter came up, my daughter, God bless her, she has my sense of humor, which is scary. And uh, when we was trying to come up with a description of the Snafu football book, and she says something about, I don't know what search engine, what you type in your search engine to find this book. <laughs> but I'm sure this is not what you, I'm sure you find some more interesting things besides this. <laughs> <laughs> That is awesome. That is awesome. Well, Bob, it has been freaking fantastic to have you on the show. Thank you for being here with us. I uh, absolutely enjoyed it. Awesome. Okay, so this has been Drinking with Authors, Literary Briefs Edition. I've been your host, Erica Lance. Our sponsor has been Skunk Brothers Spirits. DWA10 is the coupon code. Please check them out. My co-host has been the amazing... Mark Muncy from Erie, Florida and erietravels.com. And the latest book? Is Erie Appalachia from History Press. Uh, comes out June 20th and you can pre-order now. Very cool, very cool. And our guest has been the amazing Bob Dixon and we will see you guys next time. <laughs>